So we've got a table. Now table problems, particularly ones involving mins and maxes, are often not anyone's favorite. But just like spinach, uh, working on these is, is good for you. So we have functions f and g. We know they're twice differentiable everywhere. And we know their selected values at uh, uh, the points given in the table. So we're going to be asked a series of questions. It has to do with can we locate relative minima? Uh, can we use the mean value theorem for derivatives properly? Can we apply the chain rule in an abstract setting? And similarly, can we apply u substitution in an abstract setting? So I have all of these uh, formulas or pieces of information listed to the right. And now let's jump into the problem. So first, part A asks us to find just the x-coordinate of each relative min on the interval negative 2, 3. Um, so let's start with the open interval. We know that on the open interval, negative 2 to 3, and then we're going to deal with the endpoints, by the way, uh, we know that relative min occur when f prime of x changes from from uh, negative to positive as we go left to right. Okay, this occurs where? Where are we going negative to positive as we go left to right on f prime at uh, zero? Now, for the endpoints, and I should add that some uh, teachers insist that we don't need to consider the endpoints because we don't discuss the concept of relative min at the endpoints. But let's include that for those that do. For the endpoints, um, Um, on the left, a left min requires that, what do we have? The derivative is increasing just to the right. Just to the right of the endpoint. Uh, which does not occur. And a uh, min on the right requires that f prime is uh, less than zero. Uh, just to the left of the endpoint. And that also does not occur. So the only one that occurs is at x equals 0. Okay, Part B, we'll start it here. We may have to continue it elsewhere. <clears throat> Why must there be a value where f double prime of c equals 0? Well, it's because the mean value theorem applies to f prime of 0. So I'm going to write that. The mean value theorem 
again, I sometimes feel it's important to clarify that this is the mean value theorem for derivatives because we do have a corresponding mean value theorem that relates to the integral. The mean value theorem for derivatives applies to the function f prime of x because it is uh, differentiable on the open interval from negative, uh, let's see, on the open interval from negative 1 to 1. And it is continuous Continue B here. And let's separate this out. And continuous on the closed interval, uh, negative one to one. And why is it? Why do we know it's continuous? Because the differentiability implies continuity. Okay, so the mean value theorem applies. Okay, thus we know for some c. where c is between negative 1 and 1. f double, let's say, let's explicitly say the derivative of f of x, f prime of x, which is equal to f double prime of x, must be equal to two f prime at 1 minus f prime at negative 1 all over 1 minus negative 1. And what is f prime at 1? f prime at 1 is 0. f prime at negative 1 is 0. Okay. And so that's um, to restate, let's just put it all together. There is a C such that uh, F double prime of C equals zero. Okay, part C. This uh, function that we're given is based on f of x, but it is the logarithm, the natural log of f of x. So, okay, h prime of 3 is really just another way of saying d by dx of ln of f of x. evaluated at x equals 3, and by the chain rule, uh, d by dx of ln f of x is the same as d of ln f of x where we first differentiate that entire composed function with respect to f of x, and then we multiply it by the derivative of f of x with respect to x. All of that evaluated at x equals 3. So now let's see what these different things equal. 
Well, what do we know? We know that the derivative of ln of f of x with respect to f of x is just 1 over f of x at x equals 3, and that that's being multiplied by f prime of 3. And what values do we have for this? This and this. Well, 1 over f of x at x equals 3. We can look that up from the table. That's 1 seventh. This is f prime of 3. That's 1 half. So the whole thing equals 1 14th. Boy, that sure does not leave a lot of room for us to do part D. Why do I get myself into these fixes? Well, let's charge ahead. We're going to use U substitution here. And so I'm going to write the integral from negative 2 to 3 of f of f prime of gx g prime of x dx okay let's say we're going to use u substitution using u equals g of x this integral equals the integral from x equals negative 2 to 3 of f prime of u du. This is going to be du. And the integral of f prime of u du by the definition of the fundamental theorem is going to be f of u evaluated over the corresponding limits. What are those corresponding limits? Well, when x is negative 2, what would g of x be? When x is negative 2, g of x is negative 1 from the table. When f is 3, g of x is 1. And so we're evaluating that from, it's f of 1 minus f of negative 1. And that's uh, going to be, what does that table give us? It is uh, 2 minus 8, and that's negative 6. Okay, I barely made it. I hope that uh, that last part, D, didn't suffer from the size compression, and I hope that you got something out of this.